But it is. It, when y'all, when, when it's all said and done, he will be, will be, the St. Louis Rams head coach. Um, I disagree. I disagree. I'm banking on it. Josh McDaniels. It's, it's was said in. Josh McDaniels. I, I threw it in there. Josh McDaniels. Threw it in there. Josh McDaniels was kept in St. Louis for a reason. Yeah, Jeff Fisher coaches defense. They need an offensive coordinator in there, and Sam Bradford can't be changing systems if he's going to be the guy. Anyway, um, Mike Sherman, you believe he's going to be coach of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers by the end of this week. Yes. He was a good coach. He was a terrible GM. Uh, none of his teams until that 4-12 and season finished worse than 10-6. and Can he do anything with this Buccaneers roster that was previously called Young Green? Uh, I think he can do a lot with it. He, he, he possesses the skills. He's a great coach. He did good at Texas A&M. Until he was fired for doing bad. Well, a couple good years. That's true. That's true. There's no doubt about that. Well, uh, uh, hopefully Brian Schottenheimer gets fired from the Jets. That's what I'm going for. <laughs> That's never going to happen. Never going to happen. Actually, I think he's next in line for the head coaching spot. Definitely. No. Yep. He'll, he'll be there. Let's try it out. Brian Schottenheimer. You heard it here first. We'll be back in a minute. Uh, and with our wild card picks. Thank you. All right, we're back from. Uh, we're going to be talking about our wild card picks. Cole's on his phone. That's not really good. I uh, got my special guest, Andy Hattop and Cole Katie here. Uh, we're going to be starting off first with the Houston Texans and the Cincinnati Bengals. Remember, if you have any uh, questions or comments, feel free to call in. Um, Houston was a team that started off looking like they were going to have a first round bye. This team was going to dominate. They had the defense. Wade Phillips comes in. Injuries, injuries, injuries. They lose Matt Liner right after losing Matt Schaub. TJ Yates goes down with an injury. Jake DeLome has to come in. They do have Andre Johnson coming back. Um, is this team built for a postseason run? Um, and can they beat the Cincinnati Bengals? who are young, but have a talented combo in A.J. Green and Andy Dalton. We have our first call in. Let's see who this is. Hello, welcome to the Chris Baxter Show. Do you mind uh, spinning your name, sir? I am Bob Jones. Oh, hello, Bob Jones. Hey, Chris. Hello, it's nice to have you on the show. What, what, where are you from, Bob? Well, I'm glad to hear that. And uh, We're talking about the Cincinnati Bengals and the Houston Texans right now. Um, do you think Houston has a shot in this game? Well, it's a really interesting matchup. I know these, these teams actually met earlier in the season. Uh, the Houston Texans took Cincinnati Bengals down in Cincinnati, 20-19, to 19, after entering halftime down by 13 points. This was uh, T.J. Yates' second career start, and he had his only state 300-yard passing <coughs> Versus playoff teams this year, yes, they certainly are. Um, they are a talented team. I, I like I like what they've done, but uh, I think this Bengals team may be a team that overachieved this year. Maybe similar to what we saw with the Buccaneers last year. Um, the difference is, is they do have a at least a competent coach in Marvin Lewis, um, unlike Raheem Morris. Uh, we'll see how youngry he is now that he's on the streets and out of a head coaching job. Uh, make a great point about defense. Wade Phillips, uh, say what you want about the head coaching job he did in Dallas. Uh, the I, Michelin Man got it done. The, yeah, the Michelin Man has done a great job uh, with the Texas defense and has really turned them around into a top 10 unit. And uh, with Andre Johnson coming back, that may be enough of a lift, I feel, to get them past the Bengals in this first round.
would I would agree with you there. I think the Steelers' days are numbered. Um, this could turn into a two-horse race in as close as two to three years between the uh, the Bengals and the Ravens. Uh, well, I certainly appreciate you calling in, Bob. Uh, any further thoughts? No, no, I'm looking forward to a great playoff weekend. I'll be Chris. Me too. It should be it should be fun. Uh, you know, hopefully, uh, hopefully uh, the uh, the Giants pull off the big victory this weekend against against Atlanta. By the way, are you saying Bob Jones that uh, said that uh, Eli Manning had sex with flightless birds? You want to, uh, I guess, uh, let us know where you where you came to this conclusion? Uh, well, there is much evidence. If you if you look at uh, ManningBirdSex.com, they have multiple <laughs> pictures. And I'd like to point out that uh, it's not a small flightless bird. They <laughs> all are gigantic ostriches and oversized emus, especially. Well, um, we certainly aren't going to check that out, <laughs> but, but but we will validate the source, and as far as this this show is concerned, it is a fact, and uh, we will violently spew this rumor throughout the internet. Uh, thank you, Bob. Appreciate you calling in. You have a great day, and uh, I'll, I'll get you the details about coming in and being a guest host on the Chris Baxter Show. All right, see you, buddy. Bye. All right, so there you have it. Do uh, do the Houston Texans beat the Bengals? I think they do. I think they do. I also think they do. All right, well, we're in agreement on that one. Uh, Pittsburgh and Pittsburgh and Denver. Uh, a big. I I thought this was a shoot, but now Big Ben is hurt. Um, T. Bows looked horrid. Does who who wins here in the battle of the? Basically, as of late, the underachievers. I don't think uh, Pittsburgh is anything to worry about. Big Ben's always playing hurt. He's always come through and delivered. That defense also is taking a hit with Ryan Clark being out because of his sickle cell. So, that being the case, the secondary is a little weak, but Tim Tebow is going to have to step up if they want to win this game. I Right now, I get to Pittsburgh. So. Yeah. I think X Factor is Brady Quinn. John Fox, if, if you're listening to me, I. No, there is a 0% chance that you are. But if you want to win this game, there's going to be a point where you're going to reach a decision about putting in Brady Quinn, and you should pull the trigger. They are going to be prepared for Tim Tebow. They're looking for a running quarterback. If it's a 10-point game in the third quarter and your offense hasn't done anything, put in Brady Quinn, see what you got for the future. You got to the playoffs. The point here now is not to evaluate Tim Tebow. The point here now is to win a playoff game. John Fox, don't be afraid to pull the trigger. Atlanta and New York. New York is one of the hottest teams coming into the playoffs, but Atlanta is no slouch and has beaten up some uh, pretty decent teams in the past couple of weeks. So the addition of Julio Jones seems to have paid off. Uh, how do you see this one playing out, Andy? I see, I think the Giants win it just because they're a pass rush alone. I mean, you have O.C. Umanera, you have Jason Pierre-Paul, you have Justin Tuck. These three guys can get to the quarterback and quickly. I don't think can't you? Can't well, can't you D tackle as well? Mm -hmm. They're gonna they're gonna get to the quarterback, and uh, Manny Ice is going to be eating dirt quite a bit. And that and that's an interesting point. He's going to be eating dirt because they play outside. Atlanta plays in a dome. They play in Georgia. They're coming to New York outdoors, smash mouth football with receivers and a quarterback that are used to playing in the cold. Um, I don't know if Atlanta's ready for that. I don't think they practice outdoors, and if they do, it's in Georgia. There's no way that they can be prepared uh, for these temperatures, for these conditions, and for what I expect to be a, a very excited and very loud New York Giant crowd. Um, the Giants are a team that could get hot. Um, you know, obviously, it'll depend on the rest of the matchups, but uh, you know, many people are saying they're the one team the Green Bay Packers should fear. Uh, Cole, you're a Packer fan. How do, how do you feel about that? Um, the Giants scare me. They're playing very good football right now. Victor Cruz is playing out of his mind. Eli Manning having a career season. Yeah, close to 5,000 yards again. Uh, I should say for the first time we had we had three players reach or four players Man's almost Stafford. four players reach five thousand yards and speaking of a five thousand yard passer as you said Matt Stafford in his first playoff game traveling to the Superdome <coughs> against the red hot New Orleans Saints and you're the Lions expert how does this one play out 